Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy, JP, in the podcast studio with Nate and Kathy and Kathy and Nate. What's up? Nate and Kathy. What's and up, Kathy JP? And Nate. How are you doing? Kathy and Nate and Nate and Kathy. Uh-huh. I like that he, song there. He's just going to keep trying yep. to get us to sing. Yep. It's not going <laughs> to work. It's not going to work. Man. You don't we want should it. Have it. Let's start today with a singing contest. We don't have to. All right. You do. They don't want to If hear you it. do, <coughs> If you do um, karaoke, what's your go-to? I mean, I've done karaoke once before, and it was at a staff retreat. Oh my gosh, that was awful. That's the only time you've ever done it ever in my life. Gosh, your life and it was is like lame, to... man. No, but no. you crushed it. Oh, thank you. What was you it? You freaking did Taylor Swift "Love Story," yeah. and I was like, "Why oh, didn't yeah. I choose that song?" <laughs> yeah. Did he really crush it? Though? Oh, he I had crushed zero it. I was up there that. like, Ugh. "Do you know the words?" All right, yeah, we're gonna sure. do. We Let's do, do. We got ten seconds. Ten seconds of a song that you're gonna do karaoke to. Okay, you ready? I mean, okay, I mean, go am ahead. I actually, singing. Yeah, but you gotta do it as good. You gotta play it straight. It's a, it's a real contest. Gosh, what are songs? The dead air is not good song? for ratings, guys. <laughs> the silence that doesn't play well. You call me out upon the waters. That's the song you're gonna choose. Where the feet may fail, where feet may fail. Feet may fail. Why does it look like you're constipated when you <laughs> <Yeah>. sing? <laughs> like, why do you trying to, that trying to push it out? You go, yes. you're like, your like nose gets all scrunched up. Come on. And your eye, you're it's like, good for the throat. Oh, goodness. It doesn't seem abs. Oh, well, you're looking up lyrics, aren't you? For sure I am. Oh, my goodness. What? What's the song? Okay. What? Nate didn't look up the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, because and I got him exactly worship. right. He didn't have to look up the lyrics. Because I think you're going next. Men first. Okay, that's oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's the rules. Man, my throat's a little yeah. jacked today. I think do the preaching. song from the number one album in the world. Yeah, it's um, it's not a song though. I don't know the and I don't know the words. I don't have it memorized. I got a freestyle memory. Okay, here I'll do it in the background. Child of God. <laughs> the elders Child go, of the God. The elders go, are, are they saying Jonathan? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> they go, is that saying Jonathan? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man, what's a good song? Yeah, you're the one, one who started this. We didn't uh, even have to be doing this. Lay down and tell me what's on your mind. What exactly did he do to make you cry this time? Well, I will be your comforter. I will make it right. He cast a shadow on your heart, and I will bring back your light. I, I will say, I don't think I've ever met anyone more comfortable singing in front of people. Yeah, yeah. I'm super than John Lacluda. Yeah, what no, song it's was nobody that? When you got when when you can just hit those notes, Nate. When the, yeah. the people say your voice is like butter, and it just no, I'm just kidding. No one's ever said that. Can I tell you the only song that pops into my head? Okay, go for it. Okay. <clears throat> Where? Since you've been gone, oh, wow. <laughs> I can't breathe for the first time. I'm so moving on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to you. <laughs> now I. Can. I like it. I get what I want. Anyway. I like it. Since you've been gone. One time I was hypnotized and they made us do. Like, no way. Yes. You've been hypnotized? I don't think it was real. What I do you mean you don't think like it was, I was real? I was awake, but that was the song I chose. So it's like hidden in my. This is interesting that she's telling us now that she's been notorious hypnotized. B.I.G. What, what, when were you hypnotized? It was at our high school graduation. We had like a lock in afterwards and this hypnotist came. Wow. And he chose people and I was like, I think I was half hypnotized and then half. You know. No, what, like what happened? I don't like to like lose control, but he like, I don't know, had us do stuff. Like what? I told you, sing a song. And that was the song that popped in my head. And so you sang that song? 
Yeah, I sang that song. And he probably had us do other weird stuff. And you think you did it by your own volition? I think, I don't think I can be hypnotized. I think I, my brain puts up a fight. So, so but you but, sang the song. Well, yeah, but like I was thinking the whole time, like, oh. So you were just acting? Probably. Can y'all not believe that I would do that? Man. You're not. That's the story is so dumb. <laughs> one time, one time I was hypnotized, but, but I don't think not. I was hypnotized. I think I was just pretending. That's actually kind pretty of. classic, Kathy. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure. Oh I'm not sure God. if I was hypnotized. I can't remember a lot of things. I don't know. I don't remember if I wanted to do it or not. Yeah. It's like what in the world? Anyways. Okay. Speaking of mind control, I want to do some mind control on people listening. You need to move to Waco, Texas. Wow. If you are a young adult, more and more young adults are moving all the time. We, we've set, we've had people be like, hey, you won't believe this, okay. but I just moved from wherever. And I, I bet this hasn't happened before. It's happening all the time. I can I can do mind control straight up. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, you ready? Okay, I want you to repeat after me. I'm dead serious. I want it's you to just... repeat after me, Kathy, okay? Ready? <laughs> you can't yeah, stop laughing, though, because I need, I need all of your brain. Okay. All right. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have you repeat after me, and then I'm gonna have you think of some things. Okay. Oh. Okay. Starting now, oh, so, repeat oh, so after I you. I can't do it. No, you can. Okay. okay. Oh. Yeah, you can do it too. Okay. Repeat after me. Okay. Blue. 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 Purple. 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 And I want you to think of the color. So I'm gonna start over. I want you to think okay. of the color to say it. Ready? Okay. Blue. Blue. Okay. Blue. Purple. 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 Okay. Green. 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 Okay. Now I want you to think of a sport. Any sport. Don't say it out loud. Think of a sport. Okay. You got it? Okay. Now I want you to think of a fruit that starts with the second letter of that sport. Okay. You got it? I've got it. Okay. Now I want oh, you to man. think of an animal that starts with the last letter of that fruit. But don't say it out loud. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Kathy's is elephant. Yep. 100%. No elephant? Way. Freaking wild, yes. Dude. How did you do that? Man, let's go. How did that work? Let's go. Yeah. Because you said blue, just, purple, happened. green. That's not like those are baseball colors. I know. It's crazy. What did you think of? So he, he did this on me the other day, and I, I tried to pick the most random sport. So I said NASCAR. He said NASCAR. <laughs> And then, and, but then it was and apple. I guessed his, and I guessed his, and then it was I elephant. guessed his, uh, and then this time it was I soccer. guessed his animal, I guessed his animal, and it was orangutan. It's crazy, crazy. Yeah. Here's all right, it. that's enough, guys. We're wasting their time. I can't do mind reading all day. What do you <laughs> want to talk about? Oh, I okay. I was trying to mind read and tell them to come to Waco, Texas, because we have a young adult ministry called the Net. We meet weekly. You're such a self-promoter. No, that's why I was laughing as Nate was saying something kind of <laughs> real, and then JP just is like, oh, I missed to something it. else. I totally missed it. Gosh. Classic. You're such a self-promoter, man. I am, and I don't care. You just care. want them to be you're your friends? I, I read about friends. the net. I read about the net in the Wall Street Journal. Listen. In the New York Times. They both were writing articles yes. about it. If, if you're a young adult and want to be in community with the other young adults, if you want to run hard and fast after Jesus— Come join us at the net. We Let's exist go. to catch any and every young adult wherever they're at. And wow. them You're Jesus. asking people to move to Waco. Unashamedly, because I know there are people listening who are I like, feel like, that would I be feel a like, crazy thing. I do feel like Waco, like in, I feel like in 10 years, it's going to be like one of the top places for young adults to live. We, we lack Seriously? an international airport. Yeah, because it's like, we're on trend to be like Austin. Yeah. And we but got like, like topography, yeah. you got like cool, hip, trendy places popping up everywhere. It used to be like, People would think it was like the armpit. Like, I stopped in Waco, not on purpose, or yeah, you had to drive through Waco fast not to get, you know, so the smell doesn't get on you. And like now, it's like awesome. Probably because we're here. Because you're here. Well, that's true. That, Anyways, so. pack your bags, get in a U-Haul, and, and move. What if so, it's too expensive bold to, to move? <laughs> what, what, <laughs> why do you ask that? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, young adults, you're starting out in your career. You probably just graduated from college. You probably have some student loans unless your parents were generous and able to pay for your college fully. I sat next to these girls on the plane, and uh, and, I, and they were, like, so, like, Gen Z'd out. She was like, I was like, all right, King, slay. But, but anyways, I was feeling like I was Delulu because, and I was just <laughs> like, oh, I was just trying to, wow, okay. And, um... And I said, hey, so what, you know, I, I care about young adults. Like, what what do I need to know? Because, and they were like, man, you need to know we're broke. Really? We got student loans. We're, 
we're going in like we just finished law school. <clears throat> Chipotle we're, used to be five dollars. These it's are like they're 11. attorneys. Dude. Like we're gonna spend the rest of our lives paying off our student loans and and like they were so bitter and angry and like frustrated at life and I think like a f- one factor is just like and I see this in Friday Q and A a lot. Mm-hmm. It's just like victim mentality. It's it is like why are, why aren't more people asking me? Why aren't more people caring for me? Why do mm. I have to pay for this? Why is like woe is me? It's like there is so much opportunity in front of you. Mm-hmm. The you need optimism. Like if you're listening right now, I'm telling you, grateful people win. Write it down. Ooh. Grateful people win. And the per and like you look at Warren Buffett, uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. You can go through the list of like the most successful people in the world, and you one of the common threads that they have crazy optimistic, really like insanely optimistic. And those people, like in a recession, when the stock market plummets, they get insanely wealthy. And I'm not giving you stockbroker advice, I'm a teacher of the Bible. I'm just telling you, Christians have the biggest reason to be optimistic totally. because the grave is empty. Like, is the glass half full or is it half empty? Yeah. Here's the deal. Because the tomb is empty, like, we're going to live forever. Like, we have all the reasons in the world to be optimistic. But things are not necessarily, like, set up for young adults to succeed right now. Because in order to, quote, unquote, succeed and get, like, a good paying job, you got to go to college. College right now mm-hmm. is insane. Like, I went yeah. to Baylor, and looking at what Baylor costs yeah. now, yeah. it's unbelievable. I didn't go yeah. to college. Well, and I'm not saying you're successful. Yeah. <laughs> what like, you what are you going to say with that? that? Yeah. I don't like, what do you think? Do you guys think college is necessary? It feels like with Oof. YouTube and everything else, like at some point we're going to have to break the norm yeah. of, hey, this is the path that you have to take is like, you've got to go to college. Yeah. You got to go to college so you can get a good job. So you can get a good, get it, you know, get a good education so you can get a good job. Like, Literally, my husband learned his career on YouTube. Yeah. Like it, nothing that he learned. What really was at his college. major at college? He was like, uh, j- journalism, but they had like one video class, wow. and he like took it. But then when he started doing videos, he just learned it himself on YouTube. So your, your husband's gonna start working here. Yeah. And so when he's sitting back there behind yeah. the camera, is that gonna what make we, you nervous? I don't think it'll make me nervous. Do you feel? I feel like he's may punch me in the face sometime because I give well, you a hard time, and it's gonna be like oh. He doesn't really punch not. people in the face, but. Oh yeah. wow! Okay, oh. pacifist. <laughs> That's good to know. Hopefully, you don't either. <laughs> Anyways, it's been a minute. I I think that's a conversation Matt and I have had with our kids. Like, would we be okay if they didn't want to go to college? Should we even encourage them to go to college, or totally should they like learn a trade? Yeah, man. They should go to I'm Liberty really, or Grand Canyon. We're really wrestling with that. <laughs> Honestly, why do you say Liberty or Grand Canyon? Because the, one of our highest percentages, uh, like Spotify Rap, comes out every there. year, and it's like number one place in the world that listens. It's Lynchburg, Virginia. Yeah, yeah. which is Liberty, and I feel like I meet people from Grand Canyon who are totally. awesome. All the time. <laughs> it's like okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, shout out Lynchburg. Hey, if you're at Liberty and you're listening, we love you. I'm headed your way, by the way. I'll be there soon. Awesome. They did. They asked me, and I was like, I couldn't make it. So yeah. you're ask, like, have you heard of this ask, guy, JP? Yeah, 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 he could do it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but I mean, uh, is college necessary? Like, uh, depending on what you do, like you can go there and get a major in in something. Like, I think if you assume if I go to college, I'm going to get a good job, and that's yeah. not necessarily the case. You can get a good job right now. Like that's like one. Like we interviewed someone. And they were like, oh, I don't know that I, she can't work there because she's in college. And I said, well, what job does she want when she gets out of college? Because <laughs> yeah, I'm right. offering her that job today. Yeah, right. It's oh, like, wow. Like, sometimes you have to think outside the box. Yeah. Like, you got to break the norm of, like, hey, things aren't as they used to be. And I get that. Yeah. And so you got to think above the system. Like, now with crowdsourcing and, you know, GoFundMe and it's like, hey, be creative, solve a problem. And be amazing at what you do, but also be joyful. Like the the stick in the mud, woe is me, you know, inflation, I can't afford to eat, all this stuff. It's like, listen, there is you are in the land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not trying to upset you right now. There is opportunity all around you. They're like, no, no, it's not. One day I was broke. I was so poor. And I was at my apartment. I was like, man, I need money. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And I had twenty seven dollars to my name. Seriously. Real, real facts. Twenty-seven dollars. I went and bought a rake and trash bags. Okay, and I went to the knocked on the neighbor's door and I said, "Hey, I'll rake your yard for a hundred bucks." Actually, it was eighty bucks. They paid me one hundred and twenty, and I said, "I'll rake your yard for eighty bucks." Thirty bags, thirty trash bags of leaves, 
It was a half a day, gave me 120 bucks. Boom, now I got 120 bucks. I had 27, now I got 120. Knocked on another door. Hey, I've, and I've got a rake, and I've got oh, some I trash never bags. Heard that story before. Went back, awesome. bought some more trash bags. It's like, who can't do that? Like, you can sit, you can go somewhere and say, I'll wash your windshield, you know, for ten dollars and you're like what am i homeless i'm like I, no you're a hustler i do think though that there's like a stigma with those type jobs you know like that we think we're entitled especially if you have gone to college right. or you pursued some higher education it's like oh i deserve like a better job a white collar job sitting behind a desk i deserve to be important and to be a boss over people yeah, you can and- think you deserve all day long but that server you know at that restaurant that you can't afford to eat at they're making bank mm. that's what i'm telling you like i mean they are they are getting tip outs and i mean just hustle it's like work ethic is a thing of the past and and uh, you know if entitled if gra- if grateful people right. win entitled people always lose you know if you feel entitled you're like oh man the world owes me you're donezo how do you fight entitlement because i truly think it's like the spirit of the air that we breathe like Straight I don't even want to be to be entitled, and yet yeah. I have a microwave in my yeah. house. I can literally like zap something in yeah. there and have dinner in yeah. two seconds. How do we fight entitlement? Well, man, I've been I spent the last eighteen months studying spiritual warfare uh-huh. for for the book I was working on, and um, and I'll just like like we think self we think Satan demons you know manifestation demonic oppression possession somebody's like gurgling speaking yeah. get away from me you know like yes. like all that yeah a satanic spirit is simply a selfish spirit Oof. and so a self like entitlement is a flavor of selfishness it's like hey the world owes me mm-hmm. and that's you know it, it is your greatest disappointments come from your expectations write it down your greatest disappointments in life all your disappointments in life come from your expectations and entitlement is the highest platform from which you will fall. It's the it's not a I expect, it's a I deserve. Mm. And when you're operating with a I deserve, it's like what do you deserve? Let me tell you really clearly what you deserve right now so that you understand it for the rest of your life. You deserve, you know what I'm gonna say? Hell. Hell H mm. E double hockey sticks. You deserve eternal punishment. That's what you deserve. You're like, no, I don't. Why do I deserve that? Because you got drunk, because you vape, because you're self righteous, because you looked at porn because you had sex outside of marriage, because you cussed, because you stole, because you, you know, you it's the list of things, the grievances against that you have against the almighty God are so long, you don't, you've forgotten them. You did them mindlessly. Mm-hmm. You, and you think you haven't, add that to the list, right? You deserve hell. And yet God allows you to operate under common grace where the sun came up and warmed you today. You know, there's a really good chance you slept in a room with a thermostat that you could control the AC and turn it up or down. There's a really great chance that you could walk to a faucet, turn a knob and water came out Mm -hmm. and you could control whether it's hot or cold and that you had soap to clean yourself with or toothpaste to clean your teeth with and clothes to put on. Like, it's amazing. It's amazing how much we have that we take for granted. And I'm telling you, you operate with a level of gratitude. You don't operate with entitlement. You be surprised by life, and you win. Hmm. But how, how can you speak to young adults now when you came a young adult at a different age, like a different time period? Like there's a young adult listening right now that graduated from college. They're five years out. They're yeah. still $80,000 in debt. They've got a job that's fine, but it literally just pays with their yeah. bills right now. They want to buy a house. They can't buy a house because they have mm. to save up, depending on where they're at, I don't know, $100,000. Yeah. And they can't even save $2,000. Yeah. It's like, That's and so you're just real. saying, hey, have a good attitude. And it's yeah. like, I'm stuck. Yeah. You're not stuck, first of all. So I want to I address that in a couple things. There are challenges unique to the generation right now, okay? Because technology changes. And so, like, you know, 20 years ago, you didn't have an iPhone, not everybody had an iPhone, you know, and all the things. And so there's like, as technology changes, apps change, social media changes, it presents new problems. So many of the problems that we have today are brought about by the things that we wanted. Okay. So it's like, you're addicted to your phone. Well, that's your, your choice to be addicted to your phone. You, you didn't have healthy boundaries with your phone. Now you got to a place where that's actually cost you money. You felt like you needed to do things. You made 
You made decisions to go into debt, to go to college, to go into debt. Like those are choices you made. Own those choices. You know how you get in. You know if you if you are in eighty thousand dollars in debt, you know how you get out of debt. I hope it gets paid off. <laughs> One dollar at a time. Oh. You start paying off. I mean, you you got to have a plan, and maybe it's a five year plan, maybe it's a fifty year plan. But you put a plan together and you walk that plan. And you need to know that choices in the past are going to limit the freedoms that you have today. That's just true. Mm. Yeah. Like that's the reality. You've made choices in the past that have created about have created limits in your life. And so maybe you can't go to the club with all your friends, or maybe you can't buy a new pair of Jordans, or maybe you can't, you know, go on the vacation. Go on the vacation that you want because you're paying off debt. But but again, you made that choice, so start paying off debt. You paid off debt, right? You guys want to say, we have been married for 12 years, and we just paid off our student loans this year. And it was honestly, like, so relieving, such a celebration, such an answered prayer. And it did feel like I can really resonate with a listener who's like, man, it feels limiting, and it is limiting. And it's tempting to want to just look back and be like, why did we make that choice? Well, like, it's, well it's hard when you're 18, and right. it's like everyone else is doing it. Oh, I and, and I you have don't, no clue what I and was And some doing. situations are like, man, you don't know what your parents are going to pay. You don't know what you're going to pay. And then you, you don't graduate, know who you're going to marry. Like, like, what? I had yeah. some. Matt did have more than I did. And it's easy to look back and be like, he didn't even need college to learn his career. And, yeah, that's true. I think it could have been tempting to, like, be bitter about the past or, like, blame our parents for not being able to contribute more or blame society that has, like, you know, college as so expensive as it is now. And I think you can do that or you could like make a choice to sacrifice to pay it off and trust that like where you are isn't a mistake. And God can use you whether or not you feel stuck, whether or not you're not like meeting the status norm and able to buy a house and, you know, do all these things that you want to do. Maybe not able to go on the vacation that your friends are going on. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily stuck or that like where you are is a mistake. It it can make it can make me bitter towards God when it's Mm. like, uh. All these other people are getting to do these things. They're born into this family since yes. they're born into this family. Yes. Their family paid off everything. Yeah. And I'm having to work this job. And it just it feels like I'm in a uh, a position that I would not have chosen. Right. And it's like God could have done something different. And yet well, let's talk about it. I mean, let's you know, I was I was born in a family. We we didn't have a lot of money. I I couldn't afford to go to a, a four year university, nor did I have the grades. So there's a lot of factors, reasons that that didn't happen. <laughs> Um, but, and, and then let's just take, so John Doe over here, it's born into a really wealthy family. He can go wherever he wanted, has the best tutors, the best opportunities, you know, this and that. All right. So right. that's, that's the reality. Right. What are we both after? Like, what ultimately do we both want? Like worldly perspective or Christian perspective? Yeah. I mean, just, I think, success, I think matter of factly yeah. perspective, success. Why do you want success? I think there's even something under that. Mm. I think you want money and not just money, but like enough money to pay what, for what you want mm. and mm. to do the extra. To yeah. feel secure. Would you, would you want money if you knew it would make you miserable? No. Okay, so what do you what do you ultimately happiness. want? Happiness. Yeah, you want happiness. Everybody ultimately, anything you put in front of that is only because you think it leads to that. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you say money, you say success, you say friends, relationships, accomplishments. House, and yeah. all that mean all of that at the end of the day you think well that will lead to a greater sense of well-being yes you know i'll feel good if i have that then i'll feel i want to feel good i want to i want to feel joy mm-hmm. right and what i want to argue with the listeners and with you guys and feel free to step in the rings with me because i feel strongly about this is is that person who's born to that family like misery is just as likely for them as the mm. person who's born into how, nothing how how is that possible statistically it's matter of factly true right and even if they even if you look at the data that says you know does does money bring happiness they say it's capped at seventy thousand dollars that at above i wrote about this in welcome to adulting and the study may have chosen may have have um, been updated from 70 to 90 but it, but it's it's less than a hundred which is surprising that that there's no difference in happiness between someone who makes ninety thousand dollars and someone that makes twenty two million five hundred thousand dollars a year. There's no difference in happiness, and and people who make two million five hundred thousand dollars a year kill themselves. Mm. They take antidepressants. They they do things that are the greatest expression of misery that you could ever imagine. So you have to know that's not what makes me happy 
And so happiness is a state of mind. Where does it come from? But like, so like on the weekend, Adley and I are like, where should we go out to eat? And we're thinking, okay, if we go here, it's this expensive. If we go here, it's this expensive. Did y'all split it, a pizza from Domino's carryout? We, uh, she, she threw out the option of Domino's, but I had a frozen pizza for lunch that day. And I was like, I don't, I don't really want to. It would be awesome to just be like, let's go get steak and not think about it. I would be happier. You know, you, you know what would happen? You wouldn't think about it. You wouldn't, he wouldn't you be wouldn't, grateful for it. You wouldn't it. be grateful would for it. You would feel entitled I mean, there's people it. that can eat steak anytime they want. And they, you know what? They, they get tired of steak. And they're like, well, I had this conversation with yesterday. Like, those people, sometimes they're like, man, I wish I could just get a Frito pie from the fair, like I did when I was eight. You know, that was, I want to relive those days. Yeah. Like, man, a Frito pie sounds really good right now. Yeah. And it's like, ah, we can't get a Frito pie. It's right. not good for you. You know, we're going to go yeah. eat. And it's just like, you get, let's see, you know, this, the proverb says, put a knife to your throat. Uh, when you when you sit at the king's table, meaning like understand like this ain't this isn't it like mm -hmm. this isn't where it's it comes from. Yeah. And it's and it's like as we search for happiness and we long for happiness, we never find it. We're constantly wanting the next thing. Happiness is a choice right now that comes from a deep understanding of I'm not home. So the world I live in is broken. Like there's things here that aren't as they should right. be. But I'm headed to home and I'm going to be at a place that it where everything is perfect i believe in a creator who has my back like he's for me he's good and he controls everything he's good he loves me and he controls everything like this is great news he's good he controls everything and he loves me that's amazing yeah like that's that, all we need yeah that and then and then there's moments that are circumstantial that yeah. it's just like dude we're sitting around a fire we're having a good conversation we're laughing till you know right our drink comes out of our nose or whatever. I mean, it's like the temperatures, the temperatures, right. The conversation's good. The company's fun. Those are sweet moments. They're commercials for heaven. They're just commercials for heaven. Heaven, like the greatest moments on earth are the floor of the greatest moments of heaven. Like that's reality. And like heaven is a place where there's no sad moments, no bad moments. You, you, you said you can be confident because God, you know that God loves me. Yeah. We got an email yesterday from someone who said, I, I feel like God hates me because of this situation in my life. He could get me out of it. I'm stuck in it. How how can you say so confidently, hey, I know God loves me? Yeah. John 316. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In this world you will have trouble. So if God loves me, it seems like mm -hmm. he'd tell me that the world is hard. He did. Yeah. He did. He told you the world is hard. He said, hey, in this world you're going to have trouble. I want to give you a heads up. I love you so much. I want to give totally. you a heads up. You're going into a challenge. In this world, there is inflation. In this world, there there yeah. are layoffs. In this world, there is grief and breakups. In this world, there is cancer. There's brokenness in this world. But take heart, I've overcome the world. I'm I'm offering to you a kingdom, and you you have to learn to live for that kingdom. Man, and you're about to preach on this on on Sunday, but storms come yeah. to everybody. Yeah. Totally. Storms come. What 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 keeps you standing in the midst of in the middle of that storm? You have to know the truth jesus said in in matthew 7 whoever hears mm -hmm. these words and Puts does them, them is like a person who mm -hmm. built his house on a solid foundation but whoever does these whoever hears these words and does not apply them to their lives is like a person who built their house on sand and i think there's a lot of people a younger generation coming up right now and they're they're trying to build a house on sand and when the storm comes it's not going to to hold mm -hmm. it's gonna be washed away mm -hmm. you know it's gonna it's gonna be destroyed yeah mm. one thing i'm thinking of is like we're talking a lot about money being in debt or having a lot of money or not having a lot i think something that we also tend to find happiness is in things like i'm just thinking about all the instagram influencers out there that are trying to sell you products day in and day out that are going to make your life better or easier or make you happier i can't scroll instagram i can't scroll pinterest i can't even like honestly get on facebook without someone telling me if i just have this then i would be happy and i'd also just caution our listeners like i think without even realizing it we're getting like sucked into this consumerism even out Outside of just like having enough money, I think it's like using that money to buy things that we don't necessarily need, but what we think in some way will make us happy. And I think if we're like taking a step back and looking at it, we're like, no, I know that that like shoe won't make me happy. 
And it does feel good to buy something and put it on and feel cute for a second. And that like momentary happiness or whatever that you're, you're being promised. I think that that's important. And mm-hmm. I think that's where people can get into more debt. And yep. that's like, if you're thinking about looking at your finances, how do I pay off debt quicker? Can't always, yeah. you know, choose to they, buy those things. And then they want the government to wipe out their debt. Right. And that's the Ooh, spirit of I entitlement. Think. Well, that's the thing. That that's what you're seeing right now is like, hey, my hope is that somebody's going to come along, some right. Cinderella, and wipe out my debt. And I'm like, you do not want that to happen. Right. That's not going to be good for the country that you live in, for our economy. Why? Why is that? <laughs> because you because can't keep printing money. That's what's causing the inflation. Yeah. So it's like it's like I want the government to wipe out my yeah. debt, but I'm so bummed by the inflation. One causes the other. That's the mindset that puts us in the the situation that we're in. Work hard as though you're working for the Lord. What does he say to the uh, Thessalonians? He says, strive to live a quiet life mm-hmm. and work with your hands. Like um, he says in, uh, gosh, First Timothy, who did, who does ever, who, ever whoever decides. does not provide for <laughs> their family, their family, mm-hmm. especially their relatives, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's ouch. Crazy. Shocking. So it's like, dude, like you, like don't look to somebody else to save you, like learn to do hard work as though you're working for the Lord. Colossians three twenty three and twenty four, knowing that it's the Lord you receive a reward from. So, what would you do if you're the young adult, eighty thousand dollars in debt, jobs, not all that exciting, not yep. paying you all that much. Yeah, you're you're renting. What would you do to to create yeah. joy or happiness in your life? I'd buy a rake what i did yeah you know and so it's just like in the in the you know to to bring joy and happiness to my life i would you know romans 12 1 and 2 i i therefore i urge you in view of god's mercy to present your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to god this is your spiritual act of worship do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you'll be able to test and approve what god's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So I would seek to renew my mind around the things of God. And so if you're like, man, I'm sad today. I'm like, well, did you did you start today with gratitude? Mm-hmm. Did you start today with God? Did you start today by sitting still and acknowledging all the, the goodness of things that he's given you? Um, getting to know him better in his words, spending some time talking to him in prayer. Totally. Because if you didn't, I'm like, of course you're depressed. Totally. And you're like, well, that's not going to make me undepressed. It's like, no, you're doing it tomorrow, probably won't you stringing 300 days together it probably mm. will i mean there's a really good chance are you are you saying that i can just pray my way out of depression no i'm saying that the best psychiatrists that we have today talk about how meditation can actually heal and cure our brain are you anti medication no not at all not at all i'm not anti medication uh, i'm very pro meditation especially when you're meditating on the promises of god and the realities of god just answered a bunch of questions right there. Yeah, uh, I'm reminded of what Paul says in Philippians 4, that he's learned that he can be content in whatever circumstance he's found in. He's in prison, by the way. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't have enough money to go on this fancy vacation all my friends are going on, and I feel discontent in that. He's writing this from prison, and then it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God will give you the strength to be content. On your own strength, you cannot be content in whatever situation you are in. But because of Jesus, you can be. So maybe that's the challenge for our listeners this week. So you're probably wondering, like, are you just asking me to stop complaining? And Yes. um, Yes. (laughs) Stop complaining. It's when can like I complain? Never. Sure. Don't do it. Do everything without grumbling yeah. and pl- complaining so what that d- you may become blameless and pure children of God in a warped and crooked generation so that yeah. you will shine like star. Oh, I messed it what up. Been been what if there are parts of my job that I, I want to complain about? There are parts of your job that are hard because they're a job. Genesis 3, you know, you're going to work the ground that's going to fight against you. Like we live in a fallen world, so there's parts of your job that are hard, you know, but I just... Your words have powerful, and if you speak words, Mm -hmm. negative words, you're bringing negative realities about your life. Am I talking about manifesting? No, absolutely not. I'm talking about the way that God made us rulers and reconcilers in this world and that he spoke things into existence. And so as we know him, the one true God, not operating in with crystals or in the demonic realm with Ouija boards or anything like that, we get to know the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he's given us the power. He's given us power to get to share the gospel with people and watch them come from dead to life. And our words have power. 
And so speak things that are true, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things, Philippians 4, 8. Like, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, it matters. It matters to God. And so we're not talking about manifesting. We're talking about living the Christian life of the optimism that comes from an empty grave, knowing that we have an inheritance with Jesus, glorious riches forevermore. And you were just telling a friend before this, heart is normal. Like hard is normal. Expect hard. Every single one of you in whatever situation you're in, yes, I wish college wasn't this expensive. Yes, I hate that inflation is yeah. so high. We're sorry that you're in this situation, and God is with you in it. Yeah. Like, you're not alone. Expect hard yeah. and make the most of it. That's good. Let's go. Hey, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>